Good morning. It's Thursday morning, and welcome to Valley Beth Shalom's Kavana and Coffee. I'm delighted to have you. I'm Rabbi Feinstein. I hope that you are taking care of each other, taking care of yourself, staying safe, staying warm. Before we begin the Kavana, just a few announcements. I better read them so I don't forget. Please check the VBS website, vbs.org, and look for the symbol for VBS at Home, which will tell you about all of the online events that the synagogue and its community are putting on today. For example, this morning at 10.30, there's meditation with Cantor Phil. At uh, 5 o'clock this afternoon, I'll be doing an early bedtime story for kids. Everyone is invited to listen, and it'll be posted so you can do it whenever your kids go to bed, if ever your kids go to bed. And this evening at 7 p.m., Rabbi Hoffman will be teaching another edition of his Musar class, The Wonderful Traditions of Jewish uh, Morality. As well, to help you along, the L.A. Kosher Catering Company here at Valley Beth Shalom is delighted to offer you takeout meals on Wednesdays and on Fridays. We had it last night. It was very good. Barbecue chicken. I mean, we didn't have to cook. Just slip it in the oven for a few minutes and a wonderful meal made it to our table. And on Friday night, a wonderful Shabbat meal. And I strongly suggest that. We had it last week and it's really very, very uh, good, and I appreciate that. You, L.A. Kosher can be reached either on their website by just putting L.A. Kosher in your computer or 818-789-7588. That's, once again, 818-789-7588. And one last time, if uh, you're having anxiety and difficulty during this time and would like to speak to us, speak to the rabbis here at VBS, please call the synagogue, 818 818- Seven eight eight six thousand. We're delighted to have some time on the telephone with you, and offer you as much strength and camaraderie as we possibly can. As well, the VBS Counseling Center is available to you at eight one eight seven eight four one four one four. If you'd like to speak to a counselor, to a psychologist, and just sort of talk through what's going on, it's good for us all. This morning's kavana. It's all about what this crisis might actually come to teach us. Some years ago, I was a cancer patient, had a very, very serious cancer. I had to go in for a very long and complicated surgery. After the surgery was over, I slept for about three days, and as surgeries happen, I woke up in a hospital bed three days later, three o'clock in the morning, with monitors strapped to my body and tubes coming out of each arm and I felt like I was about to die and somehow impulsively I reached over and pulled one of these monitors out of its plug. All of a sudden alarms went off and into my room comes my nurse, his name was Charles, a large African-American gentleman and he screams at me, what are you doing? And I said, great, I'm dead. I've made it to hell. I've met the devil. He said, I don't know what you're talking about. Sit there and be quiet. So he disappears for a few minutes, and I thought, oh, great, this is it. I've met hell. He comes back in a few minutes with a bucket of warm water and a sponge. Comes back with those lemon sucky things that they give you after surgery. Fixes my IV. Wipes me off, washes me off, gives me a shot for pain. Shows me how to use the little button that might give me a uh, a shot of painkiller. And then he sits down on the bed. He says, I'm Charles, I'm here to take care of you. What's your name? And I said, I'm Ed. He says, well, it's good to have you here, man. We're gonna take care of you, you're gonna get through this. Charles and I got to know each other. Charles is a Baptist, born in Alabama, works as a nurse, night nurse, middle of the night for the Kaiser Foundation here in LA. I told him I'm a rabbi. He said, oh, you gotta keep the faith, man. You gotta keep the faith. Every morning, seven o'clock when Charles shift was over, he'd come into my room just to check on me, make sure I'm okay. And he'd look at me with that stern look that first night, that stern look he had that first night. And he said to me, now you be okay. Don't die on me. It's too much paperwork. And every night he was there waiting for me when I, when he got back on duty, 11 nights I spent in the hospital with him. Man saved my life. Sometimes you can open your eyes and see angels. Angels aren't these creatures on clouds with harps. Angels don't live in heaven. Angels aren't even supernatural in a formal sense. Angels are simply ordinary people who do extraordinary acts of kindness without asking anything in return. And the world is filled with angels. 
The problem is that only in a moment of catastrophe can we open our eyes and see them. The world is filled with angels. And if anything comes out of this crisis, I hope we'll open our eyes and see the angels that are all around us. There, there are angels in the hospitals today. We've been talking to doctors and nurses all day. These are selfless people who are putting themselves on the line between life and death, between wellness and disease, to fight back this pandemic, to fight back this disease. So we want to give them a hug. There are angels in all of the social service agencies taking care of the poor and the homeless. It's one thing to be shut down, locked down, and socially isolated in your, uh, in your home. Imagine what it's like being homeless at a moment like this. Those folks deserve all of our respect and our love. And, and here's a special shout out to moms and dads whose kids are home and you haven't yet killed your kids. A shout out to you as well and to teachers who are going online to make sure kids stay in touch with their learning and their growing. There are angels all around us. And it's our job to open our eyes and to see them and to recognize them. But more than that, it's our job to become one. During the course of today, some circumstance or situation is going to present itself and you are going to be asked to be an angel. God recruits all the time. And God's looking for angels in the world. And you're going to be asked to do an act of kindness without without anybody even noticing, to do an act of kindness without anyone even, even giving anything back, to do an act of kindness only because it's a kind act, and to recognize that that act is going to change the world. We have this phrase, tikkun olam, and we mean it. The world changes through every single act of kindness. And today, the world is recruiting angels. And in this catastrophe, we need all the angels that we can find. The great Italian Jewish writer Primo Levi, in his account of his time in the Auschwitz concentration camp, talked about this one moment. He was a young man in Auschwitz. He was very, very sick. And the elderly gentleman who shared his bunk tore his piece of bread and poured out his soup and shared his ration of food with Levi. Levi asked him later when he recovered, Levi told him, you, you could have died, but you saved my life. And the old man said, no, my boy, you saved mine. It was years later when Levy wrote this account that he realized what the man meant, that there's no greater act of freedom, no greater assertion of humanity than to give. And in a moment when the world is cruel and difficult and when the world is catastrophic and when the world takes away from so many life, health, wellness, to be able to give back, to be able to open a hand and open a heart and open oneself and give back, that's the greatest pushback, the greatest protest against catastrophe that there could possibly be. It's the greatest assertion of humanity there could possibly be. It's what we call angelic. Be an angel today. When God calls Abraham to his mission, God said, hey, Abraha, be a blessing. Today, sometime during the course of the day, you're going to be asked to be a blessing. Please, be a blessing. Let it be a good day and a safe day. We'll talk to you over the course of the weekend. Have a good Shabbos as the weekend comes and take care of each other. Stay well.